the sum of your word is truth. truth that means truth, everything truth. in the word of God is absolutely true. And all of your righteous rulings endure forever. These are God's laws. When God puts a law in place, it endures forever. Why do you think laws of gravity, laws of magnetism, laws of thermodynamics, laws of physics, laws of biology, laws of logic, laws of mathematics, why do you think these things endure forever? Why do you think they never change over time? Because they were put there by the lawgiver God who doesn't change over time. So this is outer versus law manip. It's outer versus law manip because it's not bound by time and space. Because like oh outer versus law manip, I think that's what we have here: solid outer versus scaling for the Bible. I don't know what you mean by outer versal. They're called metaphysical laws. They're yeah, called metaphysical right. because they have to come from outside of the physical. Let me go ahead and lower the volume so I can continue speaking. Once again, these are called metaphysical or supernatural laws. These laws cannot come from inside of the physical world because everything inside the physical world is constantly changing over time. Oh, yeah. That's another one of those pesky laws that constantly uh, that tells us that everything in the physical world is constantly changing over time, but it itself never changes over time. So these laws have to come from outside of our physical world, but they dictate what happens inside the physical world. That's why they're called metaphysical or supernatural laws. And so because of the law of cause and effect, these metaphysical or supernatural laws have to have a metaphysical or supernatural lawgiver. That's the God of the Bible. Batman, do you think, hold up, do you think the universe is a infinite dimensional structure? No, sir. There's only one infinite being, and that is Yahuwah himself. Okay, well, how many dimensions do you think the universe is comprised of? Ten. Ten? So you're, you're a string theorist? You're a string theorist. Well, there's ten dimensions in our universe, only four of which are observable. There was a uh, ancient Hebrew rabbi called Nachmanides, uh, probably just butchered his name, Nachmanides, I believe that's it. Anyway, he was able to study Genesis and come up with the, the fact that there are ten dimensions, but only four are, are observable. As our government, our government spent millions of dollars to figure out that there are ten dimensions and only four are observable. If they had simply read their Bible, they could have figured that out. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, strength, strength, so that means a virtual five that God's high, high complex multiversal. Uh, no, that's not that's not not most yeah, no, 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 sir. The, the word universe is very clear. Um, the, the word universe is a compound word. Uni means single, like unicorn, single horn, unicycle, single word. Universe. Verse means spoken, sen spoken sentence. So the word universe means single spoken sentence. God created all of the co cosmos in a single spoken sentence. I think, oh, okay, so that's creation hacks too. But I think what he's, when he refers to universe, he's like a Dragon Ball sense, like a macroverse type of thing. I think that's what he's referring to. Yeah, he's yeah, referring to that. science fiction or fictional ca cartoon yeah. character. Yeah. Wow, yeah. isn't that interesting? Yeah. Not... <laughs> Yes, sir, may I help you? Well, you will. You just ignore me. What is up with this? Oh, I turned it down. Mr. Batman, do you have me locally muted? Why would you ask No, that? sir, I have, I have you locally lowered because you keep asking stupid questions and saying things over other people, and I'm not interested in hearing you talking over other people. Do you have a question? Well, I had a question, but I forgot because you wouldn't answer me. So. That's called short-term memory loss, sir. If you start eating correctly, that'll go away. I do eat correctly. I eat four oh, times really? a day. You you're, you're, you're a fat ass nigga. I eat four salads a day, Mr. Batman. Do I you eat pig, sir? I just had a cheeseburger tonight. And a milkshake. See, you're not answering the question. You're not interested in the conversation. Have a nice day. Repent or perish. You're on your way to hell. Next. Mr. Batman. 
Yeah. Is God bound by dimensionality? Nope. What do you think that happened if I was a God created all the dimensions, sir. God created all the physical world. So he's not bound by his creation. God created certain natural laws. He's not bound by those natural laws. But there are certain natural laws that he, he is bound by because the, these are his attributes. He's bound by the laws of logic and mathematics. Why? Because... Yo, on me, Batman. On me. He's, he's teaching us Bible scaling. Hmm. See, people don't like to learn, and then they mute me. You see, no, 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 continue, continue. <laughs> you see, God is not bound by his physical creation. You see, God is only bound by his very own attributes. There are certain physical laws, like laws of physics, laws of chemistry, laws of biology, that God can set aside any time he wants. Because he created those laws, but there are other laws that he cannot set aside, like laws of logic and laws of mathematics. Why? Because these are his very attributes. It says in Romans chapter 1, starting verse 20, Therefore what can be known about God is plain to us, because God has shown it to us, namely his eternal power, his divine nature. Hold on to this one. His invisible attributes have been clearly perceived, clearly seen, ever since the creation of the world and everything that has been made, so that you and I have no excuse. Oh, so, uh, so I also have a question. Batman, do you, yes, think, sir? do you think God could actualize a world which mathematical theories and concepts didn't accurately describe the physical? No, sir, because mathematics is an attribute of the mind of God. If you are saying he could actualize a world without mathematics, you're saying that he could actualize a world without him, and that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. wouldn't, that, wouldn't that describe God in an ontological naturalist sense? Wouldn't that just lead to naturalism? No, sir, because naturalism cannot explain where laws of mathematics come from, number one, why they don't change over time, number two, and why they're going to be here tomorrow so you can do mathematics again, number three. Mr. Batman, I got a question. Excuse me while I go pour a cup of coffee. I'll be right back. Okay. Damn, so uh, Christian Bible, strongest verse in fiction now? Got it. Look, sir, this is what I have written down, right? He's not bound by dimensionality. He's just like outer and irrelevant speed. He has law manip, truth manip, you know, axiom manip, just passive law manip, yeah. Like he, just, he just has everything, to be honest. No cap. Infinite parts. I don't know, he's kind of a unit. Jesus is only nail level, though, so he's not that strong. Oh, that's, 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 his, that's his manifestation body. So. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, dude. That's fucked up. <laughs> it's almost up, dude. I think most of slap that? Jesus, though, no cap. That's pre-training our Jesus, bro. No so cap. Yeah, I, I, pre pre resurrection pre resurrection pre resurrection <laughs> Post res Jesus is Loki overpowered though, if we be honest. What are his feats? Um he's like oh, this, he's the same being as God and he just listed off the God scaling, so He went to yeah, hell yeah, priest like out of souls from hell. Ad hacks, yeah. God is kind of a unit. Yeah. And Jesus, and Jesus has that, like mind no. manip. He has mind manip too, like to gain. Oh my trust god, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to I'm trying to ask that. He's, he's not, not here. He's, he's not, not even here. here. God killer. He's not even oh, here. Shut up. God killer is weird. I'm trying to ask Oh no, Zeref, me and you just might have to like publicize, you know, Jesus scaling. No we cap. We might have to set the letter. No cap. That'd be sick. Dude, I, you know, like a really long time ago, I made this argument for God being above fiction. It's a really weird, shitty argument, but I made it. I think it's in me and Grace. And you, Hold on, how, how y'all feel about inverse gospel? Inverse gospel, that's not hard to debate. I mean, who, who would win? Who would win? Who would win? Lucifer or Gabriel? Who would win? Lucifer or Gabriel? Hey, listen, listen. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take God. I'll take God. I'll take God. You take who? I know. I'll take, I'll take, I'll take Michael the Archangel. I'll take God. Yeah, I'll, oh, yeah, I'll, take, I'll take God. I'll take Michael. I'll take Michael. Judas versus Jesus. I'll take Judas. I'll take Judas. I'll take Judas as well. Judas slaps. So I'm taking I'm Max. taking post uh I'm taking the post uh crucifixion Jesus by the way. <laughs> Wait, are we are we doing Old Testament or New Testament? Uh, uh, 
Uh, we do New Testament, so I'll take post. Uh, Bible uh, Shippuden? Yeah, Bible Shippuden. <laughs> uh, you can take pre crucifixion uh, of Jesus. Yeah? So Good you know, evening, boys and girls. Power towards Moses. Moses. No cap. No cap. Oh, sorry. Every time Batman joins the call, Batman. I just imagine him in like some podcast or some shit. I don't know why. Mr. Batman, you should do a podcast. Well, um, I do every now and again. I use my friend of mine uh, and I. We used to do. Um, what do you believe? And he was a pastor out of Chicago. Oh. We did a radio podcast. Oh, gee, oh, I know Batman, that what do you think of fun? Kent Hoven? What do you think of Kent Hoven and his arguments? Do you think he's like a good. Oh, I, I like some of his arguments. I like the fact that he's a staunch creationist. But uh, unfortunately, he denies a lot of the Bible, like most people in churchianity do. I used to be a member of churchianity, too. You know, you have to take 100% of the Bible is true, or 100% of it is false. Who do you think is the best theist debater? Like, uh, including, like, not just on Discord, like, publicly. Mm -hmm. It's the Batman. People say it's William Lane Craig. Uh, one of the better ones I've seen... Now, William Lane Craig is a joke. Yeah. I mean, I, I, he he does have some good arguments. But do you know what his argument for the Trinity is? Oh, no. It's the three-headed dog called Tartarus. I'm, I'm sorry, the Trinity is not the three-headed dog called Tartarus. Uh, Mr. Mr. Batman, who's the strongest out of Tartarus? Yeah, Mr. Batman, what do you think about Hitler killing all the Jews? One, one person at a time, please. Oh, I'll go first. So, who do you think the strongest is out of 12 disciples? Like, who's going the highest? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You keep asking me these questions about scaling the highest, and I have no idea what you're referring to. Mr. Batman, who means, like, who's the highest in AP? Who's the strongest? Uh, 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 you're asking, like, who's, like, the strongest? Like, I'm going to whisk. Well, God is the strongest, sir. Yeah, you'd say, well, you'd say, number one, God, then you'd say, like, Jesus, and, like, the angels. Well, actually, I think you put God, Jesus, Satan, and then the angels. No. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are one, so they are equally powerful. Yeah, but, like, that's actually got a scale to put both in our God. Oh, dear Lord. Okay, let me mute this Goku idiot. If you're going to start talking about science fiction and cartoons where you can just go about your digital masturbation yeah, yeah, yeah. all you wait, like. Wait, Mr. Batman, I have a question for you. I have an answer. Go ahead. Okay. So what's your opinion on Hitler killing the Jews? Hitler killing the Jews? Opinion? Yeah. My opinion is you should tell the women in the background who shut their mouths or go into another room. Hey, that's not me. No, yeah, it's not him. All right. Well, whoever has the women in their room, they need to be quiet. A woman should be silent when men are speaking. <laughs> Isn't that sexist? That's very sexist. Oh, oh wow. That's fair. No, no, that, that's fair, Mr. Batman. Mr. Batman is based? So, yeah, I agree, so Mr. Mr. Batman, Bro, could you answer my question? What's your opinion on Hitler killing the Jews? Are you already Batman canceling me? 2020, 2021. I, I Again. Say, I, Hitler killed the Jews because he was a non-Christian, he was an anti-Semite, he was a pro-evolutionist individual trying to manipulate the human genome. So he thought it was no problem to kill anybody he wanted, and he thought the Jews were a cancer in the genetic code of humanity. The Jews, the gypsies, the homosexuals. No, sir, they're not. They're the chosen people. They were chosen by God. Uh... Batman, hold on, Batman. Uh, how do you explain evolution? Like, uh, yeah. macroevolution. Evolution. Yeah. Um, evolution doesn't exist. We are speciation. Wait, and wait, because wait, I, wait, I happen to be a science teacher. So, again, evolution doesn't exist. Evolution declares we must get bigger, better, stronger, no, faster, smarter all the no, time. No, no, we never observe that. It, that. Evolution doesn't declare that. Sir? Then what does it declare? What powers evolution? It, it's just change over time. What kind of change? Is it random or specific? It, it's, it's, change, it's, change, it's, change, it's change that is 
specific due to natural selection and has been has traits that are and, beneficial to your survival. In order for you to have natural selection, would you agree, sir, that whatever the organism is selecting for, that selection, the thing that it's selecting for, must pre-exist the selection process and it must be available for selection in order for the organism to use it? Oh, what do you mean by that? Well, let me give you a very simple example. If your mama was to send you to the grocery store to get a gallon of milk, Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden you get to the grocery store and there's no gallon of milk out on the shelf, can you select for it? No. Yes. Great. So who put the gallon of milk on the shelf? How did it get there? Me. Okay, yeah, I, okay, I get what you're trying to say here, but do you understand how natural selection works? Yes, sir, I teach it. I'm a science teacher. Okay. I understand that natural selection can only select for the traits that are already available. The, o the only thing it can select for is the information that's already built into the genome that's available for selection. Okay. Natural selection never gives you any new information or any new traits. It can only select for the existing information and the existing traits that are already built into the system. So. Who built those traits into the system so they could be selected for when there is, when there, I'm sorry, sir, you speak over me, I'm going to mute you. Don't do that. I'm in the middle of talking to you. And you need to pay attention. As a matter of fact, people pay good money for this education. You ought to be taking notes. Now, once again, when you're talking about natural selection, there is no new information that comes into the system due to natural selection. You have to own, you can only select for the information or traits that is already built into the system. So who built the traits and the information into the system so it could be selected for? Okay, do you know, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, genetic mutation, exactly, that's exactly what I was going to say. Do you know what genetic Okay, mutations what is mutation, are? sir? Mutation, what is mutation? Mutations aren't exact copies of the gene. It's just um, alterations or the, like I can mess up in creating other yes, traits. exactly. Right? And these Again, people, here we go. And here we go. People, In um, order to get a mutation, what do you have to have to get a mutation? Already existed properties or genes. Uh, uh, what, what properties? You, you know, uh, sir, I tell you what, I can tell you've never really thought about this, so let me help you. In order to have a mutation, you know what you have to have? What? You have to have a self-replicating system. Mm -hmm. That's what a mutation is. A mutation is a copying error of the existing working information. So, in order for you to get your first mutation, you have to have a fully functional self-replicating system. So, where did the fully functional self-replicating system come from so you could get your first mutation? I, I don't know. What's, what's there wrong? you go, what's, sir. What's wrong your that? world, you just broke down well, into in, what's insanity. Wrong? What's wrong? How is that insanity? You see, in, 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 in order for you to have a fully functional self-replicating system, it had to be created completely working with all the information so it could select for and all the information so it could self-replicate because mutation does not give you new information it only copies the existing information incorrectly that's less information and less functionality I have a term here's some homework for you sir it's called genetic entropy look that one up hold on how does me not knowing the causation of like what the, the first organism may turn my worldview to insanity how does me not knowing that but you do know sir you do know that all things had to have a beginning would you agree sir that because of the law of cause and effect everything that has a beginning is known as an effect and every effect must have an adequate cause yeah but what if me not knowing the cause Great. But if so I once know again cause, since everything has matter? to have an adequate cause and since mutation cannot be the cause of new information, where did information come from for your first self-replicating organism? If I just don't know, that's what the cause I know you is. don't know, sir. Now, here's why you can't tell me I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know. No, if you no, had any knowledge, you could refute me. See, but you don't an, have any an knowledge. So now here's where all you can do, sir, is say, I don't know. That would just be an argument from ignorance. Because... Like, you, yes, sir, can, you can, have an argument from ignorance. Just, oh, I, I call this the stupidity fallacy. Oh, you think everybody's as stupid as you are. Trust me, that's not the case. I happen to teach this stuff oh, as on. a profession. Hold on, hold on. I'm, a, I'm just going to give an example so you can understand. Let's say there was a murder, right? 
And I, I don't know who like mur did the murder or committed it, but I know it wasn't the newborn baby. Even though I don't know who did it, I know who didn't do it. So it could just be the same example. Just because I don't know what Actually, sir, no, it couldn't. If you have a murder, let's say you walk into a closed room. Let me give you a more adequate example. You walk into a locked and closed room. The doors are all locked from the inside, okay? Mm -hmm. If you walk into that closed and locked room, all the doors are locked from the inside, you find a dead body. There's no obvious sign of trauma. There's no stab wounds. There's, there, there's you know, you can, uh, you're, you're, there's, the body's laying face down. So you're not seeing any obvious signs of trauma, okay? You look all around the room, you see no breaking and entering, okay? Well, this could be natural causes, okay? Mm -hmm. This is called Godel's incompleteness theorem. You might want to Google that as well. Oh, I know. So, if you can stay inside the room and answer all the questions about that dead body and how it got dead, well, then you have natural causes, and you're good. But wait a minute. You turn the body over, and you find a gunshot, a gunshot wound that killed this person. Now you have a murderer. Now you have to go outside of the room to explain the evidence that's on the inside of the room. Now... Because of Godel's incompleteness theorem, you can't stay inside your little box of the physical realm to actually explain what's going on in the physical realm. Inside the physical realm, we see that there's information. Information cannot be explained by staying inside of the physical world. Specified complex arrangement of symbols that performs a function or conveys a message utilizing a transmitter, receiver, and agreed upon language that is the definition of information, cannot be explained by staying inside the physical realm. So because of Godel's incompleteness theorem, you must go outside of the physical to explain what's going on in the physical. Now, do you understand, sir? Mm -hmm. Can you tell I've done this before? I don't know, like, go out of the gaps, but oh, that's sure. Yeah, sure. Go back and listen that's to the old one. Here hold on, that's not what Mr. Ba okay, hold on, Zareph, keep debating him, dude. No, that literally is what Mr. Batman is arguing. Mr. Batman argued. No, hold on, no, he's, 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 no, hold on, hold on. I mean, can't exactly.